that the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 41 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE, and we have our new segment debuting soon, which we've yet to find a name for which we will soon. Um, it will debut, I think, next week. We'll hopefully get it out to you guys. But every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker and YouTube. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read on this podcast, tweet us and the host bar WP and follow us as well or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host I am not continue to be joined by my co-host corporate cappy this week he is in corporate school and couldn't get out so i'm left to do the podcast alone alone the lone wolf here doing it by myself but that's okay uh corporate cappy you know school is more important so that is all right and i'll do the show alone this week and he'll hopefully be back next week for you guys as well but yes, I am here alone doing the lowdown show. And you know what else it should be alone? It's Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw should be in his own fucking category. And to be known as the loner show because it sucks. And it, it feels like they're doing it by themselves. It feels like they'd have no help at all. And they, they just have one guy back there. And we all know who it is back there. Don't have to fucking do the goon voice. That buck teeth idiot who thinks he can produce a good show. When every Monday night we get let down once again. It's almost like I don't even want to watch Raw anymore. Like I literally feel like I don't want to watch it. I don't want to have to make way on Monday to tune in for three goddamn hours. Yeah, three hours that is, first of all, useless because we we see time and time again that three hours just doesn't work for no Monday Night Raw. But we get we tune in every Monday and we get let down. Like, like, I'd rather watch. If TNA was on, yeah, you know, I'm not even going to go there. I can't go there, guys. I'm not going to watch it. Um, but yeah, we get let down every single Monday night, and it just keeps getting worse with this week. Like, SmackDown is definitely the A show. It, it's just so, it's getting to the point where I don't understand how they can't work together and make the show just as good as SmackDown is on Tuesday. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's like, what are they doing back there? How do they not realize that SmackDown and whoever's producing that show, why can't they go and copy that? Hmm? Why, why Why? can't they do the exact same thing? Why is it such a problem? Oh, because Kevin Dunn thinks it's it, it, Monday Night Raw is doing it right? That fucking Bugs Bunny retard back there? Hmm? No. It's pure garbage. It's hashtag dumpster fire. It's what it is. Every goddamn week. And every goddamn week we get let down. So, anyways, let's get into your tweets out there. Let's start it off, guys. And we'll start off with Glorious Greg. He puts Raw gets a 2 out of 10 this week. Yep. Well, what a surprise. Also, I'm glad Kevin Owens closed out the show by putting Reigns through the table. But Raw was still a hashtag dumpster fire. The official hashtag of Noel's Bar WP. Uh, he also puts the tag team title match was pretty good and the tag team match to close out the show was good. Eh. Well, we'll get into my thoughts about that later in the review. Thank you. Glorious Greg. Next set of tweets, Tony Mercer at Recrem. Why not on Twitter? He puts, I was there live. Oh, you were there to watch a dumpster fire live. That's, that's, that's a shame. Tony Mercer. I hope you had a good time though. And I have to say it was a lot of fun. Well, you know what? It is a lot of fun. We've, we've gone to our fair share of, uh, Raw and SmackDown's live. It is pretty fun. Uh, the opening was crazy. The main event was great. The tag team championship match was good, as well as Kendrick and Alex, Cedric Alexander and Brian Kendrick. A lot of filler, though. I give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah, and that's the problem with a three-hour show. They, they scramble to fill it, but they fill it with useless nonsense. And it, it's such a difference from seeing it on TV than going live. So I understand where you're coming from, Tony. So it's good you had fun. Uh, 
be sure to go to as many as you can. It's, it's definitely an awesome experience. Next set of tweets comes from Irrelevance. He puts, I almost forgot today was Raw because <laughs> I was re-watching the Amazing UK Tournament. Yeah, I have to say that was unreal, that tournament. But I heard that the, the UK Tournament, uh, the, the wrestlers were being like uh, held back from a lot of their moves they had to do. So that's kind of a letdown. I can't wait to watch more from the UK talent. The rest of the show was like taking NyQuil. Oh, my God. They almost put my ass to sleep. Just give me SmackDown already. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Raw gets a 3.5 for Reigns being F5. Kurt Angle is finally in the Hall of Fame. Neville is a great heel and Owens looking great. Yes, finally we get Owens looking great. We'll get into that later. Irrelevance also put Raw great. Haha, <laughs> Raw was trash. <laughs> After the first 20 minutes, I was falling asleep. 3.5 out of 10. Yep. We got no Stephanie or McFoley. We got Charlotte and Bailey being utter shit, but Raw must have been great. <laughs> yes, it wasn't that great. With a good tag team match and great end to Raw, I would say Raw was good, right? Well, it was okay, in my books. Relevance. Next set of tweets, Casey Salvis puts, okay, show Lesnar looked dominant, especially when he made Reigns look like a fool. Also, a tag team match was good. Six out of ten. A lot of generous ratings today, guys. I don't know if it was that high. Uh, and the last set of raw tweets comes from You, you love so good to me. That's right. It comes from at real Michael Chow. And if you're wondering why this man has his own entrance music, that's because he won our 2016 Twitter fan of the year. So, guys, if you want your own entrance music while I read your tweets, all you have to do is win our Twitter fan of the year and our Slammy Awards every year. So, in saying that, let's get into Michael Chow's tweets this week. He puts 3 out of 10 raw there. See, I like that rating right there. And typical hashtag dumpster fire. There it is. The official hashtag. Reigns finally being booked as a loser in the opening class slash closing segments. Finally, did Vince just have the night off? <laughs> right? I think he had the night off. Like, where what's how the hell did he let this slip? Uh, not one woman's match on a three hour show. Give Raw back the Divas title because their division right now is an absolute joke. Hashtag corporate Michael Chow. And you know what? That is not even being corporate. That is extremely true because the women's division this week was utter shit, as you would put it utter shit pro cedric lumbar checks alicia fox's hug god kurt angles hall of fame is true it's damn true we'll get into that later too and reigns gets added to the list of owens table it in man oh god that's great cons part-time lesnar beats up the full-time locker room <laughs> charlotte's winning strategy becomes a losing segment for the fans and monday night raw 100 percent agree with you there that was i don't even know what the fuck that was when i first seen that that winning strategy thing come out on tv i i, I texted brandon I'm like what the fuck are we gonna watch right now like this better be good because i the winning <laughs> or winning strategy just sounds god awful anyways Let's get into the SmackDown tweets, shall we? And we'll start off with Glorious Greg. Keep a solid 8 out of 10. Miz versus Styles to start off the show. And the announcement of the Chamber match for AJ Styles title. Can't wait for that. Yeah, me either. For that, La Luchador finally being unmasked. And it being Mickey James was awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what will be Mickey's role in the feud between Alexa and Becky. And what's her end game all in all. Another great show. Definitely agree with you there, Glorious Greg. Thank you for your tweets. Tony Mercer puts added star power to the women's division. No Carmel's worth tonight, so that's a plus. Memphis was Silent City. Hash, <laughs> 7 out of 10. Yep, definitely agree with you there, uh, Tony. Oh, I forgot to read the uh, beginning of his tweet. He put solid event once again. Why a family story is really picking up. Dolph went to for the king's throat and Mickey James. Yeah, and that leads into the other tweet. Thank you, Tony, for your tweet. Sorry for reading them backwards there. Casey Selvis puts great show. Ziggler is an awesome heel. It's great to see Mickey back, and once again, SmackDown is better than Raw. 10 out of 10. Yes, I love that ring. Perfect 10. Next set of tweets uh, comes from, let's go with Irrelevance, and he puts, uh, I think I lost the tweets here. Oh, yeah, I did. Give me a sec, guys. There we go. Irrelevance puts, wait. Raw building towards a pay-per-view. The best build toward the pay-per-view for Raw is when Lesnar and people F5 boring reigns. Okay, let's talk about SmackDown now, Relevance. 
Uh, it talks more about Raw. I, I think I'm losing the tweets here. I'm botching. See, I need my, my, my co-host, Corporate Cappy. I'm botching hard. Okay. He puts, they, I think he talks about, okay, here we go. Uh, for Raw, they tell me what, they tell you what's happening during the show an hour before Twitter. And if we don't get news, as we might, we might see, for example, they say Harper and Orton matches next week. And I can't wait for that. For SmackDown, they tell you what is up next. Like, what can I say that already hasn't? What can I say is that SmackDown builds interest and builds for the next episode? Well, I had to catch up on SmackDown, which sucks. But it was a solid show. Definitely better than the shit scene we raw, <laughs> the shit we seen on Raw. Definitely agree with you there. Relevance is a little confusing with your tweets there, but I got them out there. Last set of tweets comes from Michael Chow. He puts 9.9999316 out of 10. <laughs> what a rating. Missed a perfect 10 rating for me because for Super Cena going over two weeks in a row. First Baron Corbin, now the Miz and Styles. What the fuck, Vince? Yeah, well, that's typical John Cena. Pros, Becky, Alexa, and Trish Stratus' crazy cr- friend put on pay-per-view match during a TV show. Um, Jerry, the King Lawlers, and... Jerry the King Lawler, enough said, and SmackDown Live. Yep, I agree with you there. Con, Super Cena's Bury the Talent series. <laughs> what a hashtag. Is no one safe and Corbin Revolution no shows? Yeah, where the fuck was Baron Corbin this week? Uh, question, Raw overbooked Hell in the Cell at Elimination Chamber. How many Chamber matches do you see? I think there's only going to be one chamber match, Michael Chow, and I don't think the women will be in a chamber match. I would love to see that, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're just going to see a one-on-one, possibly a triple threat match at Elimination Chamber. So I think those are the it for tweets. Let me just double check so I don't miss anyone's tweets here. Um, What do we got? We got... Uh, I think we got some questions here. Yeah. Glorious Greg, do you guys think Mickey James has a motive for joining forces with Alexa Bliss? And when you want to see, and would you want to see Miz win the Roar Rumble or Sami Zayn win the Rumble or, and just raw keys being a dumpster fire? Yeah. Well, I agree with you there. Um, as for the Mickey James thing, uh, I think there's something going on behind that. And I'll get into that in the SmackDown review. And I would not like to see Miz win the Roar Rumble. That is definitely a no no. Sami Zayn has been my pick for like the last couple of months. Uh, I'm not sure what same uh, corporate Cappy's pick is. We'll get into that in the uh, Royal Rumble prediction video. We'll try to get it out to you guys next week as well. Other than that, that is going to be it for the tweets, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always. And if I miss some, I do apologize. So let's just jump right into the review, guys. Start off with, I can't believe I want to fucking talk about this, Monday Night Raw, and it's just, again, like I said in the beginning of the show, every week it continues to disappoint us fans, and just produces utter shit, and hashtag dumpster fire nonsense, let's, let's, okay, let's get the review out of the way so we can talk about the A brand, when we get to the Smackdown review, um, opening segment, see right here. Right here is where you know Raw is shit, and where you want, you're gonna get people to change the fucking channel. Your opening segment is Roman fucking Reigns. Yes. We started off with Roman Reigns. Yeah, that's going to make me grab the channel as fast as I can and switch to the... I don't care what fucking show is on TV. It was better than Roman Reigns opening Raw this week, okay? I could have watched The Price is fucking right and it would have been ten times better. That Drew Carey trying to be exactly like Bob Barker. Man, he lost so much weight to try to embolize the guy. It's just fucking retarded. But anyways... Yeah, we open up with Roman Reigns. Um, he starts talking about the shield. Like, just nonsense that no one wants to fucking hear. And Paul Heyman comes out. Jesus Christ. Okay, and I'm like, okay, this is going to be Brock Lesnar coming out. He's pumping up Brock Lesnar um, and gives a Royal Rumble spoiler. Eat, sleep, elimination, repeat. Um, then Kevin Owens and Y2J come out. They talk about... Uh, the titles they both have and how everyone uh, better watch it. Okay. Love the comedic relief by Y2J there. Then Rollins comes out. and Oh, my God. At this point, I'm like, oh, my God. Are we going to do another clusterfuck opening again? And then he says he's going to be the one to main event WrestleMania this year. So out of all that, 
of the opening segment, it does sound like Raw is going to be the main event of WrestleMania this year. So it'll be interesting to see uh, who actually main events from Raw at WrestleMania. Um, then fucking Braun Strowman comes out. Here we go. Now it's like clusterfuck round two. You don't need to open with this much star power. You, you literally look at SmackDown. They opened with two superstars this week. Or, well, they had the whole Shane McMahon thing. But usually they open with, like, one or two superstars. And that's it. And they, they keep it simple. This is just a cluster. And I, you don't know what the fuck's going on. There's too much shit happening in the ring for you to follow it. He stares at Roman Reigns. And out comes Brock Lesnar. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. Everyone's going to start fucking brawling with each other here. He gets in the ring. And out of nowhere... Sami Zayn jumps Braun Strowman. Like, where the fuck? Why is Sami Zayn added here? And anyway, we this goes back to what me and Corporate Cappy said. He needs to stay off TV. If they're going to build this, if they're going to do the underdog story with him, he should be kept off TV until the Royal Rumble and then come back at the Rumble. And that'd be a huge story. They could do the Dana O'Brien thing all over again. But no, they chose to have him come out here for some fucking reason. Um, and everyone starts brawling. Strowman starts to clear the ring, then Brock sta- they have a Brock and Braun Strowman stare down here. And I'm like, okay, fine. Maybe this actually there's some hope here for this to be actually good. Maybe we'll get Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar to fight each other. And no. It doesn't happen. Uh Brains jumps in and jumps Lesnar from behind. And KO and Jericho get in there and they fail. And F5 to Roman Reigns at the end. Oh, okay, that was the only good part. That and the stare down with Braun and Brock Lesnar, I'll admit, I'd be an amazing match to see. That's probably a fantasy match I'd want to see as well. Finally, something I could say for Braun Strowman that I want to see him, and that's against Brock Lesnar. Who would have thought? Fucking Brock Lesnar, the part-timer. Uh, I, just, I don't know what the fuck this was, though. It was just way overpowered, way over-clustered. Like, the brawl was fun to watch, and it was hype for the... It just... And it was hype for the Rumble. It's just... We're... T- uh, it's just, it's two weeks is too much with this shit. There's two weeks in a row we open with a clusterfuck. It's got to stop. Next week, it's, it's just got to open with one person, man. You got to stop this nonsense. Um, they'll probably open up with Goldberg, to be honest. Um, so we'll move on to Rusev and steroid fucking juice bag McGee Mahal versus Enzo and Cass. And fuck my God, man. There's no way that Jinder Mahal got that big that quick without any enhancement does anyone not see this this is like what the third week in a row that people are still talking about going why the fuck is he not being drug tested those veins are gonna explode any day now (laughs) anyways enzo and cast um they look very very focused before the match coming out that's definitely a different style They, they they get their chromo quick out of the way but they look very very serious there's no jokes this week um but I think uh, I think I think Vince McMahon is just afraid to drug test Jinder Mahal. It is really I don't blame the guy's fucking huge now, but still, um, we cut to a commercial right off the bat though. I'm like, why before the match even got in starts, we get a commercial. Why we couldn't just start the match? Couldn't see an actual tag team match start. We had to cut to a goddamn commercial. We come back from commercial, and during the match, Enzo basically is getting dominated. Uh, the crowd was really into this match, by the way. It was really crazy. I didn't think they were going to be this into it, but they were really, really into it. I think they are just waiting, like me, for this to actually... Uh, this feud is only good when it's a tag team feud, basically. So, it, 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 like when there's tag team matches, and that's just like the club and uh, Sheamus and Cesaro, which I'll get into later. But it, finally, it looks like the crowd got into it. Um, big cast gets a hot tag. He comes in, just whooping everyone's ass. Um... In, in this whooping everyone's aff, ass part of the match, Mahal just looked very fucking stiff. Like, stiff as hell, man. You guy just doesn't look like... It looks like the steroids that made this guy a fucking robot. Is he taking steroids or fucking molasses? Like, what's going on here? Um, anyways, Enzo and Cash pick up the win. Um, this felt very much like a live event match, in my honest opinion. Um, nothing prolonged story wise. After it was just, it was just useless in my books. It was a good match, but it was useless towards the storyline. So we'll see where it goes after this. Um, move on. We got a cruiserweight match. You know that that hour of cruiserweights we're supposed to get the JBL set on that one show in the network. But you know, here we go. We got our first minute and fifty second segment of the night. Uh, we got Austin Aries and Gallagher on commentary. Austin Aries, that fucking banana. <laughs> Me and Cappy laugh at that all the fucking time. Like, what's with the goddamn banana in his pocket? <laughs> um, this ends up being a quick match. 
you know, what else is new? Shocker on Monday Night Raw for Cruiserweights. Um, the Cruiserweights on Raw are just fucking useless, in my opinion. It, I say it every goddamn week. That they're useless. They need to just stay on 205 Live. It needs to be its own show on, like, a Thursday night. Just get off of Raw. You don't need to be on fucking Raw. You don't do anything for 205 Live. You don't promote anything. It's a minute and 50 goddamn seconds out of a three-hour show. Like, again, what Tony Mercer said is a lot of fucking fillers. It's just terrible. Now, Davari wins. And has to stare down with Jack Gallagher after. You know, whoopty fucking do, man. No, let's just move on. Then we get some earlier today footage of uh, Sasha Banks doing a uh, pre-TV warm-up, I guess you can call it, in the ring. Never seen this before. And it shows a bunch of ring crew people around the ring and some wrestlers. And it shows Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. And it's just the worst acting, man. I don't know if some of the other ring crew people were actors. But it was just god-awful. It just it looked bad and really well set up. They're trying to make it look real. And it just was terrible. Um all of a sudden, while Sasha Banks is like trying to warm up, Nia Jax jumps in, just attacks her, and everyone starts panicking and freaking out. You look in the background, Drew Gulag and Tony Nese are starting to laugh for some reason. They just couldn't hold it in. Um, I don't know. This was something new, I guess. I felt like we should talk about it a little bit. I don't know. It's something to prolong the feud, I guess. It's it. We know where this is going. So it's get, Sasha's going to milk that goddamn injury for, for a long time now, probably till WrestleMania or maybe till Elimination Chamber, and they're finally going to end that feud then. Because um, I'm hearing rumors that it's going to be a fatal four-way at WrestleMania for the women's title. Um, so we'll see where this goes. But we know where this is going. And it looks like Sasha Banks is pissed off too. She tweeted Rage Against the Machine. And we all know she's not actually tweeting about the goddamn music, guys. Come on, let's be honest here. Look through the goddamn lines here. Read between the lines. We know what she's talking about. She's pissed off. She hates that she has to milk a goddamn injury and stay off TV. She loves wrestling. She's great. That's what I love about Sasha Banks. She, she's one of those women wrestlers that just loves wrestling, always wants to wrestle. I mean, Darby is preventing her with this stupid fucking storyline that makes no sense and no one gives a flying fuck about. No one. I don't, you tell me someone that is interested in a Nia Jax and Sasha Banks feud that's being produced right now. It's not being produced well, but you tell me that if someone out there loves this feud, they need help. They need some serious help. All right, moving on. Cesaro and Sheamus versus the club. Um, this is the only thing that's actually worth watching every goddamn Monday on Rob because it looks like it's the only feud that's actually looking good and they're actually caring about uh, plain simple. It's just it's just working. It's working for both teams. So we have. Uh, I think this was for the titles. I, th- I I'm pretty sure. I'm not too sure. Um, it was a good back and forth match. Yeah, it was for the titles. Um, Sheamus uh punches the ref at one point. <laughs> like literally, my boy John Cone sold that fucking punch on just unreal. He he went flying, man, and then. After he punches the ref, he gets distracted. Then there's a magic killer, and the club wins. Or so he thought. John Cohn gets up and then uh, reverses the call with the other referee. And they're, they're getting a good argument the rest back and forth. Because uh, there was another ref that came in and did the count. But John Cohn reverses the re- the call, and Cesaro and Sheamus are still your tag team champions. This whole thing right here. With, if Monday Night Raw copied what happens and what they did with this story and what they're doing with the story for the rest of the show, I wouldn't have a problem with Monday Night Raw. Because they continue to just give us nonsense with the rest of the show. It's just horrible. They need to start fucking waking up and smelling the coffee. But thankfully, there's something worth watching on Raw. And it's a Cesaro and Sheamus in club feud. And it's sad to say because the club got been misused since they've debuted in the WWE. Move on. We had a backstage promo with Zayn, Rollins, and Reigns. Because um, there it was announced that there's going to be a six-man tag in the main event. It would be Zayn, Rollins, and Reigns against Strowman, KO, and Y2J. Yeah, fucking what a great match, man. Everyone wants to. Looking forward to that main event. And this was just cringe, man. Like, it was just Sammy trying to, like, coach his team. It was just fucking awkward for him. It, just, it felt like the, not the Sammy Zayn that everyone's come to love. It was just fucking god awful. It's just, just so cringe. I just didn't like it. He's tried to do the shield pose with the fist in the middle. <laughs> Fuck, get out of here, man. Stop. Stop making Sami Zayn look like a complete fool. It's just dumb. And Rollins and Reigns walk away. I'm I'm done talking about that backstage. I don't even know why I fucking wrote it here, my page here. Um, we're moving on. We got another uh, a cruiserweight match. And guess what? Two minutes long. Whoa! Two minutes. 
did did I just say two minutes for cruise weights? Whoa! I have so much time. You know, that, that's too much time for cruise weights. No, no, can't be doing that. Anyway, it's a 205 live rematch. We have Tony Nice or Tony Neat, as Corporate Cappy like to call him, versus Rich Swan. Uh, nope. This match didn't even fucking happen. Neville jumps Swan before the match. Uh, Swan fights back. This is crazy ass brawl between these guys. Really, really intense, I might add. Um, too bad it was so fucking short. The refs were fucking everywhere, too. But again, another useless two minute segment on Raw. That's only four minutes, JBL. Four minutes out of the hour you said that is used for cruiserweights. Four minutes. Two segments. God awful. Moving on, uh, we get a backstage uh, after this, later on, after we come back from commercial break, we get a good backstage heel promo from Neville, I might add. Um, Neville is just a really good heel. I love him. But, you know, I get off of Monday Night Raw because you're just making me look stupid, Ben. Just stupid. All right, we got the New Day segment. My God. <laughs> I laugh, though. Come on, guys. New Day are comic relief. As much as people want to start hating the New Day, they're fucking hilarious. The, their entrance this week was just... <laughs> go back and watch it. I was dying. I was literally, like, pissing myself. They get in the ring. They start hyping the Royal Rumble, um, saying there could only be one winner. And then they start, like, teasing that the, they're going to fight each other at the Rumble. And then they say, if one wins, they all win. Oh, fucking course. Except that's not how it works, New Day. <laughs> There's only one individual winner. But whatever, you know, they try to make it seem like they can all win at the same time. Tyus O'Neil comes out. What a fucking other shocker. Because they got to continue this this Tyus O'Neil garbage crap. It's just it's starting to get more staler by the minute. Um, Tyus wants to, one of the spots of the New Day. Because he's not in the Royal Rumble. You know, help a brother out. <laughs> so he challenges one of them for their spot in the Royal Rumble. Now, let me, let me point something else here. So he, he challenges Biggie and Biggie upset, accepts. Or he challenges one of them and Biggie accepts it. So Titus O'Neil is battling for a spot in the Royal Rumble match. How come this is not happening with everyone else? Everyone else just, to get, it just gets to come in and say, Oh, I'm in the Royal Rumble match. But Titus O'Neil has to work for it. Really? Is this is this punishment still from what he did last year or two years ago? But this guy's got to work for Royal Rumble spot. I I can already see where this is fucking going, guys. He's gonna like he's gonna somehow get into the Royal Rumble. It's gonna be we all know he's gonna like attack one of the members of the New Day before the Rumble match and take his spot. We all know where this is fucking going because we get into this man. But credit where credit is due, Titus is the only wrestler to wrestle for a spot in the Royal Rumble match. Um, Tyus loses this match, obviously, but we know it's going to happen. What I just said is going to happen. Um, I don't know. It, it, the match kind of went longer than I think it should have too, but whatever. I guess that's, that was the spot filler right there. Um, moving on to Charlotte's in-ring promo and oh my God, man. Did the women's division ever take a massive plunge down into the grave pit? Like it was already had its hand in there, but man, they just put three quarters of their body in after this fucking cringeworthy segment. This was so fucking bad, man. Like this, Charlotte is supposed to be this this top. Like I love her work as a heel in this whole Queen Charlotte gimmick, but this week was fucking utter shit. The between Charlotte and Bailey this week, I literally cringed and bit my tongue. I couldn't believe what the fuck I was watching. Anyways, Charlotte comes out. She starts running her mouth on Bailey about her past. Um, I don't know. I it was just a waste. I could I didn't know what the fuck was happening. They're showing she's showing pictures of Bailey's past and video footage. It was just like it was so awkward and something you just didn't want to see her. Like fucking wrestle already. Then Bailey finally comes out. You know, we all oh, we got serious Bailey. Ooh, I mean, this sucks. She's my girl. Um, Charlotte gets out of the ring and runs away. Bailey gets on the mic. Uh, Charlotte uh, calls Bailey an average fan. She's not in a, n- not in a wrestler. She's an average fan. Okay, sick Charlotte. Then Bailey starts calling out Charlotte about uh, being there because of her father. You know, yada yada, some boring shit. Uh, Bailey starts to read poems, and I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Poems, really?" And they're just god awful poem. They're they're this they're just ruining the woman's vision right now with this shit. They really need to seriously need to do something about this because it's just getting cringe worthy every goddamn fucking week. 
I don't even know what else to talk about with this, man. It just it was bad. It was plain and simple. It was hashtag dumpster fire. That is it. Oh, okay. So then after this, you know, we can, what's with showing replays of the beginning like eight times? I saw like eight times. Brock Lesnar getting in the ring in that whole brawl like eight times throughout the night. I don't know what the fuck up was that. What the hell up was that? Like, oh, did I forget about the opening segment? You know, because you're, you're feeding me all this other bullshit during Raw that I'm supposed to. I, mean, I forget. I just, oh, I forgot Brock Lesnar was just here. Whatever. Move on to the third Cruiserweight segment. Wow, we have three. But guess what? Guess what? This only lasted three minutes. You heard that right, guys. Three minutes. So that's six and a half minutes total out of a three-hour show of Cruiserweights. We get Brian Kendrick versus Cedric Alexander. God, uh, I don't know, man. We got to see that Alicia. We got to replay the Alicia Fox freak out from last week, which is pretty funny. Um, Austin Aries back on commentary, and he's just legendary on commentary, I might add. He's just so good at commentary. It's going to suck when he has to go back to wrestling because I'm going to miss him on commentary. Um, Cedric Alexander, though, so good. You know, you guys know he's my boy, but look at him, man. He's such a great piece of in-ring talent. His finishing move, the lumbar check, is just an unreal finishing move. Not to take anything away from Brian Kendrick. He's also really good, but it's just this was just awesome. But it sucks. Again, they're given such short time on Monday Night Raw. I don't even know. What to, oh, it's so stupid. Nine minutes. No, six and a half minutes of, of, of cruiserweights. <laughs> they got Alicia Fox coming out. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. I was cringing hardcore here. But Cedric won! Cedric won, thank god. It didn't cost Alicia Fox. Didn't Alicia Fox didn't cost him the match. I just love he, he like he tries to he fakes going for the hug with Alicia Fox and just ducks out of the way. <laughs> that was great. I just wish it would be on on fucking 205 Live. It would just be so much better. I can't say it was a good segment because it was on Monday Night Raw and just take Monday Night Raw takes away from that shit. Then we get into the big announcement. Which was leaked on Twitter the day before. I hate that they fucking leaked this shit, man. They should have just waited until he debuted. If he's going to be at the Rumble, just had a Rumble appearance and then announce after. We get the announcement of Kurt Angle in the Hall of Fame. Definitely well, well fucking deserved. I can't wait to, uh, to see Kurt Angle into the Hall of Fame. Like, it's awesome. There's rumors that it's going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin to induct him into the Hall of Fame. We'll see what happens with that. So we get into the main event of Monday Night Raw. We have Kevin Owens, Y2 Day, uh, Y2 Day, Jay. And Strowman versus Rollins, Zayn, and Reigns. Um, but Raw continues to produce main event that draw no one in. Like, I didn't give a shit about this main event. I don't know if any of you guys did. I just didn't give a shit. It was just, it was just a, again, the match was clustered. Just like the opening segment was a fucking clusterfuck. I don't know. The ending was, eh, it was okay. Um... Strowman pins Zayn for some fucking reason. Again, just making Str- Strowman look strong on Zayn for some whatever reason <laughs> backstage someone has. Uh, they start brawling everywhere. Kevin Owens ends up at the end of this power bombing Roman Reigns through the table, and that ends the show. Finally, we get the Universal Champion. How many weeks have we had the Universal Champion look utter shit and absolutely weak? He's your champion, Monday Night Raw. He's supposed to be made to look strong every week. He has that fucking title on his on his waist or shoulder or whatever. We finally get it, and he power bombs Owens through the table. I was marking out huge when that happened. I'm like, yes, finally get the champion to look strong. But it's again, this is probably going to be short lived. He's probably that's probably going to be it, and we're not going to see it ever again. But I can't. I can't even talk anything more about the main event. It was cluster. I just don't care. Um. I gave Raw this week a 2.5 out of 10 rating. Um, I'll get into my uh, co-host. He actually sent me via text message uh, his rating for Monday Night Raw. He says, I gave Raw, this is from Corporate Cappy, ladies and gentlemen. I gave Raw a 1 out of 10 for Owens finally looking like a strong, credible champion for once to end the show. (laughs) Yes, 100% agree with you there. Thank fucking Christ. So, let's move on. SmackDown review, guys. A show, the A brand, ladies and gentlemen, because every week continues to produce content and actual wrestling content that we love to see and love to watch. I can sit through an entire episode of SmackDown and not care that there's a fucking commercial break. No, not one. I don't give one fuck that there is a commercial break. 
So we get into the opening segment. We get Shane opening up with a huge announcement, and that is that SmackDown will get the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view two weeks after the Royal Rumble. Are you fucking kidding me? Two weeks? How is that enough time to... Why does SmackDown get shafted with single-branded pay-per-views? Two weeks after double branding ones. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You got no time to book. I don't understand that. I really, really don't. They have lots of fucking time. You could have put it at the end of February, and then you could have put Fastlane at, what, mid-March, and then you have WrestleMania right after that. You have time. I don't understand. Fuck, like, just whatever. Move on. Styles and John Cena come out. Um... They start bickering at one another. And out comes the Miz when he's talking about the Elimination Chamber uh, WWE title match. And uh, Miz tells Styles that he was beating up John Cena before. Styles was even cool. Or before jo- beating up John Cena was even cool. Hoo-hoo. Wow. Uh, he says he wants to be in the chamber. You know, of course, Miz, he's got his uh, accolades. Yo, you face John Cena for the WWE title, WrestleMania 27. Oh, okay. Uh, Cena starts egging both these guys on here. <laughs> fucking very pg like and it was cringe but whatever uh shane sets up a match miz versus styles so heel versus heel here really i couldn't believe that heel versus heel to start off the show this right here is why smackdown beats raw every goddamn week might not be in the viewership actual tv ratings but i think everyone on twitter everyone around the world and everyone listening to me right now can agree that smackdown is better than raw and it's because of shit like this so we get into the match Miz versus styles and it was a good match shocker it was a good match again i just don't understand raw man just you can't produce anything like this at all and we have john cena on commentary during this and f- wow it was god awful I don't even. I'd rather hear nails on a fucking chalkboard than hear John Cena on commentary again. I, I, I'd rather hear a siren blowing in my ear and ruining my hearing for life than hear John Cena on commentary once again. It was just fucking terrible. It was so crazy. He's talking about fucking surfs up too. No one gives a shit about surfs up too. That fucking stupid penguin movie. God. Anyway, Styles ends up throwing Miz into John Cena, which causes a disqualification. A brawl starts happening, and Cena AAs both Styles and the Miz to look strong. So we get John Cena looking strong in the beginning of the show. I mean, I can complain about that, but I understand where they can. I, it, it, SmackDown backs up everything they do. That's the one thing. Raw doesn't know what to do. They don't back up anything they fucking produce. SmackDown does. This just makes uh, John Cena not look rusty. Like, he beat Baron Corbin last week, and he's looking even stronger this week going into his match with Styles uh, at the Royal Rumble. So, you know, I understand why they did this here. Um, We'll move on. Nikki Bella in-ring segment. This was actually cool, and I actually love this feud. I said it the last couple of weeks. This feud just keeps getting more intense by the week. So Nikki Bella's in the ring calling out Natalia. Natalia comes out, but she's actually in the crowd near the tunnel. And it tells Nikki to watch the Titan Tron. Natty is shown walking through the tunnel and out towards the merch table uh, in the arena. She starts pointing out all the Nikki merch right next to the John Cena merch. <laughs> Fucking shocker. <laughs> but we all know that was made to look that way. Um, she starts criticizing the merch guy and why the hell there's no Natty merch. Like, poor merch guy. He doesn't know. Uh, Nikki joins, uh, ends up joining Natty up there and spears her through the merch table in this huge brawl. Right in the middle, everyone standing around out there it starts happening with multiple security guards. These these girls are just kicking the shit out of each other. There's a lot of intensity here. I just love this goddamn feud. I cannot wait to see the conclusion. I hope they have a one on one match at the Royal Rumble, man. That's going to be really sick to see. Um, I just love it. The feud up and down again. This even feud right. We're not even talking about the the title. In the SmackDown Women's Division, and it, this feud is already better than the entire feud and the entire division on Raw. And it's sad to say that, and I say that because I'm not a big Nikki Bella fan. But this is some good work putting on by both Nikki Bella and Natalia here. So we got another Kurt Angle Hall of Fame announcement uh, this time, and just like Raw, after uh, the announcement, they play Kurt Angle's theme on Raw, and we had the cr- whole crowd chanting, "You suck." They remember Kurt Angle's uh, theme song and the chant to do after, and basically now it's out of respect 
They did it in Memphis this week because I fucking hate Memphis, Tennessee. I'm sorry, guys. I just hate when you, you casuals in Memphis, Tennessee go to a WWE uh, SmackDown or Raw. It's just, it's terrible. They play the song and there's barely any chain. They're like, who's Kurt Angle? Kurt Angle? Who's that? Mommy, who's Kurt Angle? No, fucking, it's cringe. It's cringe. I'm moving on. I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, we get on to the King's Court. And that is Jerry Lawler. It's basically his own talk show on SmackDown. His guest this week is Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Jerry's in his hometown, Memphis, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, decent response. Uh, Dolph comes out. Jerry starts asking him about his, this, this new attitude and, and why he's been doing this. Dolph stays silent. Uh, very, very uh, cocky attitude from Dolph Ziggler. I love to see that. Um, Jerry Lawler even shows him footage of what he did last week. Um uh, and asks him again why, and he stays still, still saying silent. Then he finally breaks his silent after Jerry Lawler eggs him on to say something, and he says he's got some footage, and he shows uh, Jerry Lawler getting elbowed by Dolph Ziggler before he had his heart attack on Raw. And this, this right here, this was the turning point in how it turns so intense. Um, then he starts going to tell Jerry Lawler, he's like, "How do you feel that?" Right after that, right after it gave you all those elbows, you had your fatal heart attack. And I'm like, oh, oh my god, man. So Ziggler basically got, and is saying that he's one that caused the heart attack for Jerry Lawler. Getting very, very personal here. Um, I can't believe they went this far. It was crazy. And we get Jerry Lawler firing back at Dolph Ziggler. And this is some good work by Lawler. I always criticize Lawler for his uh, his lame jokes on like the pre-shows and stuff. But you know what? This has been some good work by Jerry Lawler in this segment. Ziggler ends up kicking Lawler in the chest and walks away. Um, this <laughs> funniest part here this is really funny. And it's, it's sad when I say funny. Um, JVL came off commentary to go help his friend. If you've seen on camera really quickly, he tripped over a cord and felt like he just ate shit. <laughs> the whole crowd's like, hey. <laughs> oh, poor JBL. But he went in the ring to save his uh, – told, uh, told – uh, uh, David Otunga on commentary after to save his best friend, Jerry Lawler. Didn't know they were best friends. Moving on, we got Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton. Uh, there's a uh, segment before a- Ambrose wanted a new IC title belt because he said it smelt. Um, we'll get into that. We have some news about that. Uh, but uh, Shane McMahon denied it. He uh, Dean Ambrose says he wanted Bray Wyatt. Shane ends up booking Ambrose versus Randy Orton. Um, into the match. The match was actually really, really good. Both these guys can put up a good match. We all know that. Uh, Harper gets involved once again, and him and Aunt Randy start arguing with Bray Wyatt. Ambrose wins off the distraction. Um, then we get into the ring, and Harper is trying to get Bray to turn on Orton, uh, and it's not working. Bray wants the family to stay together, and Harper ends up walking away. Um, this is right again another feud that makes you want to tune in every goddamn fucking week. It's I love it. Um, later on, Bray has his own promo backstage saying that Randy Orton and Luke Harper will have a match next week, and Loser will walk away from the family. Like, look at this feud right here. This whole feud just beats anything Raw puts on in a three-hour show in in its entirety. I love this feud. I can't wait for the conclusion next week. And again, look, SmackDown produces content that makes you want to tune in into the next week. Like someone pointed out on Twitter. Um, it's crazy. I love it. I just, I love where this is going. It's, uh, oh God, it's going to be such a good match next week. Luke Harper and Randy Orton. There's going to be a lot of intensity behind it. I can't wait for it to happen. So we'll see where that goes from there. Um, Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch in a steel cage match is our main event. So look at that. The woman main eventing SmackDown. It's something we haven't seen any before uh, in WWE in the last year. But this is the first ever steel cage women's match on SmackDown. And it's for the SmackDown Women's Championship. What a feud this has been to uh, with the mystery of La Luchadora and if she would show up in this match. The match itself was fucking epic. A lot of good moves by both girls. A lot of close finishes as well. Lula Chidoa finally shows up and prevents uh, Becky from escaping and helps Alexa Bliss win. Becky gets pissed off, gets a hold of the mask and rips it off. And ah, Mickey James, we called it. We knew it. We told everybody it was going to be Mickey James. If you go back on our podcast, you can hear that. But Mickey James, is it shocker? But everyone thought it was going to be that uh, Peruso girl, whatever her name was, but it ends up not. It ends up being Mickey James. And we end the show 
with Mickey James holding up Alexa Bliss's hand with the title. So where is this going to go? You know what? I got a small prediction for that. Um, I think Mickey James will eventually turn on Alexa Bliss, and that's going to set up a title match between Mickey James and Alexa Bliss. So in, in that, Mickey James will be turning face. But I think for now, it's just going to be played out as her, you know, her crazy manager, crazy helper, you know, like a Dana Brooke style uh, to uh, Alexa Bliss. But again, SmackDown, good from start to finish, as always. Um, with the exception of not seeing Baron Corbin, which really pissed me off, I gave SmackDown a 9 out of 10 solely due to the fact that I did not see uh, American Alpha or Baron Corbin on the show. So it gets 9 out of 10. Again, it's just it's good every goddamn week. And it's the A show, and it'll always be the A show. And Raw is slowly slipping into the phase where I don't even want to watch it. I don't want to watch it at all. I'll just catch the highlights. So that gets a 9 out of 10, and I'll go into... Uh, Corporate Cappy's SmackDown rating. He gets SmackDown a 9 and 10 as well. Great show. He puts great show from start to finish. Obviously love the cage match. The whole SmackDown, the SmackDown woman as a whole continue to impress with all their segments and matches. Uh, SmackDown continues to give us something to tune into every fo- following week. And I agree with my co-host there. Both agree the same thing. Just SmackDown is just so much better. And it will be. Every week we talk about it. So let's move into the last part of the show, ladies and gentlemen, and that is our WWE headlines. That's right. Welcome to WWE headlines, ladies and gentlemen, the show part of the show where I read off some interesting and Breaking news, I guess, in the WWE because there's a lot of ones I just wrote down hours before this podcast. Yep, so it is our part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll get it right off the bat. Uh, first bit of news, according to JD from New York, is a podcast we listen to. He puts the current rumors for WrestleMania 33 are AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle. Wow. If that fucking happens... That'll be match of the night right there. I don't care what other matches they fucking produce on that show. Kurt Angle and Styles will steal the fucking show. I guarantee you, and you hear it here first from me, that will steal the fucking show right there. I hope that happens. WWE, wake up and smell the goddamn coffee and give us what we want. Give us Styles versus Kurt Angle. That'd be an epic way to have Kurt Angle go out into the sunset to have a match with Styles on WWE and even at WrestleMania. It's also being rumored that Styles is to face Shane McMahon. I really hope that doesn't fucking happen because I don't want to see that. I don't know who wants to see Shane McMahon versus Styles. That's just stupid. You can build a feud around it, but I don't know. I don't like that. It just it takes away from everything. Um, and if they want to compete with uh, Wrestle Kingdom this year, as there's been rumors that everybody's trying to make a better show than that, you cannot go with Shane McMahon versus Styles. That is just the worst idea imaginable. Next bit of news, some injury news. Tajiri has injured his leg, and there is no current timetable on his return. I know he came out on Twitter, or uh, came out the other day, and it was put on Twitter that uh, he recently updated people with his leg injury. I haven't found it yet, but again, he has injured his leg. Another bit of injury news, Hideo Itami, his shoulder injury. He is ready to return soon, and we will get Hideo Itami returning soon. That's some good news. Itami is a great piece of talent. Uh, can't wait to see him actually stay in WWE without getting injured. Um, next bit of news, Randy Orton has a gym altercation with a fan. A fan wanted a picture of Randy Orton at the gym. Orton uh, had headphones on. He didn't hear the guy. Uh, the fan got pissed off, started taking pictures of Randy Orton. Orton got pissed and started yelling and swearing at him. The fan got butthurt about it and started complaining online like usual fans do. You know what? I got something to say about that. Just leave fucking wrestlers alone, man. They're in the gym. They're getting a workout for you. For them to look good and for them to produce good matches on WTV. You don't need to fucking bug them, man. I know you probably just wanted a picture with him, but he's in the middle of a workout and he had his headphones on. You don't got to fucking be a jackass about it. That's my opinions on that. And we'll move on. Next bit of news, as you guys uh, definitely have heard earlier this week, a uh, sad bit of news. Jimmy Superfly Snuck uh, has passed away. Um, he had a lot of health issues, and we know the story behind him. Um, definitely a huge loss in the WWE community, so rest in peace uh, to Jimmy Snuck and um, all of our prayers are out to the Snuck family. Next bit of news, Fastlane News, Goldberg is set to main event. 
the pay-per-view. Yes, you heard that right. There's current talks of Goldberg, and there's rumors saying that Goldberg is to main event the pay-per-view. There's no word on his opponent for that pay-per-view. I guess it's like a warm-up match for his WrestleMania match. Well, I guess he's going to warm up the Royal Rumble too, but uh, Brock is not scheduled to be there, so it's going to be interesting to see who he faces at Fastlane. Um, next bit of news. AJ Styles gets robbed at a live event. Yes, a live event on Monday. He got robbed, and he reported it to police. Uh, he got a black bag stolen, and inside the bag was a, a $1,000 U.S. cash, $7,000 Japanese yen, which is $80 Canadian, and I think it's $60 U.S. Uh, an iPhone. That sucks. I mean, <laughs> we're not, this generation, guys, if you lose your phone, you have a fucking heart attack. Uh, Beats headphones, a small TV screen, and a Xbox 360 with six games. So AJ Styles gets robbed. Hopefully that turns out good and he finds his bag and the investigation is pro uh, going on right now. Uh, last bit of news uh, is what I said earlier on the SmackDown review. The IC title and US belt are getting new designs. Yes, you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. According to BeltFanDan.com, the new belts are currently being shipped out from overseas. And he says they, will be, they are for WWE TV and it will be replacing the US and IC title. So they're getting a revamp look. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. I don't know if they're going to stay with the current format with the uh, the world title looking belts. But we'll see what they look like. But they are getting revamped. Uh, I don't think it should be revamping the IC title in my opinion. It's, it's it, They went back to the retro look like what five years ago. And I think they should keep it that way. It looks nice. I like the white strap. It still brings a lot of prestige and it gives that reminder of the classic IC title belt. I don't know. I just I, I think they should keep it. The U.S. title, sure, why not? Uh, I don't really like the look of that. If they need to change that, go ahead. But I think they should just keep the IC title the way it is and the U.S. title. You know what? If they want to change it, then whatever. That's not my the pit. That's not my thing to say. But you know what? It's just my opinion. I think the U.S. title could use a change. It kind of looks, you know, crappy. Not to say anything about the U.S., guys. Come on now. Don't be goons out there. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for myself and myself alone this week on the Lowdown Show. Hopefully my co-host will be back next week for you. But that's going to wrap it up for week number 41 of the Lowdown Show, Brain Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw. Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll, or not our Twitter poll segment. I bosh there. We don't have our Twitter poll segment anymore. We have our WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. We have our new segment debuting soon, hopefully next week for you guys. Remember, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker, except for this episode at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. If you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us and follow us. I know it's by WP or by dropping a comment on YouTube and also subscribe to us on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and we are always here, me and myself, the, me and my corporate co-host, the Blissful Boss, Corporate Cappy, are reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at the real deal now.